Yeah. Speak. Um, Rob's been for a fag. Sorry, a cigarette, because depending on which continent you're from, that means other things. So he's ready to rock and roll. Should it be fag? Yes, everybody, everybody, got, everybody got a new, new drink, fresh glass, whatever it is, yeah, okay. Right, so, uh, last section this. I struggled a bit in that first section because I didn't really know what to talk about. I've got that much information, I didn't know which road to point out. And uh, I've been chatting to uh, a few people in the break. So what I'm going to try and do, uh, I'm going to leave mortgages and stuff now. I'll have to come back another time or maybe we can all get together another time. Next week. <laughs> we'll come back next week then. Um, and from talking to some of you in the break, I'll try and address those things that we've spoken about during the break, because it seems more uh, relative to what we want. So just bear with me again, I might go off shot. You know, I'm usually better doing these things without any notes, just talking rubbish like. Okay, so I'm going to cover some things now uh, that we've spoken about today. I'll tell you what I might take, I mean, this is only my take, on um, paying for utilities, gas, water and electric. Um, somebody during the break has raised this issue, and I wasn't going to talk about it tonight. So I'll cover this, and I'll cover what I discovered, uh, and how many people are onto it. Uh, and I, I think I was... I was one of the first, in fact, I think I was the first, I'm pretty out and get out of it free. Um, what well, I found out from a, uh, um, somebody who used to work for gas companies, he told me an inter interesting piece of information. So anyway, let me just tell you what is happening. Remember, based on we're not really paying for anything. Um, so we, gas, water, electric, there are utilities. Um, what's happening is we think we are paying for gas. Let's take gas, gas and electric mainly. Uh, we think we're paying for gas and electric, we're not actually paying for anything. All that energy is free, it's free energy, we've never paid for it in our lives. But the trick is, from the other side, is to uh, create that illusion that we are paying for it. So we think we have a gas bill, don't we? Is it a bill? Is it signed? No. Okay, we have an electric bill, we think we're paying for the electric, but what we're really paying for is, um, is for the privilege of that energy passing through their equipment. Again, it's like a service charge and it's also an administration charge. Okay, so let's take gas for um, argument's sake. I feel like I'm going to break out into a song now. I don't know why I'm like that. Also, so, okay, um, we've all got gas meters. We get billed, it's every quarter in it, and it goes over these ridiculous amounts of prices, and we have to kill ourselves just to keep warm or to have some good lighting. I don't know what bill is here, it must be a bloody fortune here, yeah. uh, for electric and stuff. So, all it is is. Um, these energy companies, I've had some right now, I've barely gone to court with, uh, oh, managed to run up a £3,500 gas bill um, and I, I kept trying to get it up and up. And, then, and you can think, well, it's a muppet, what do you do that for? But I did it to try and just push the boundaries out and see what I could do. And I used to walk into court and just have a real laugh over it. Um, so what I realised is that um, all your utilities, let's take gas electric, like I said, they are passing through equipment. These gas suppliers and electric suppliers, uh, and I'll name them, all down to me if anybody wants to claim against me, you've got to prove it, I'm going to argue. Um, Scottish and Southern, um, Eon, what else? This British Gas, whatever they are, they're not supplying us with anything. They call themselves gas and electric suppliers, water supplies, whatever. They're not supplying anything. Um, Transco National Grid, supply the gas and electric for the all of this country, for all of UK. Okay. What they do is the main services and power lines, the main whatever they use, is owned by National Grid. Transco, actually, that's owned by us, that's another story. Okay, so they supply all the streets, all the houses, all the buildings. Okay, the energy company, through legislation, again, statute, it's not, it's not law, um, what they do is, let's, let's pick Eon, for instance, Eon pay National Grid so much, let's say it's a million pounds for the year. They're not buying the gas or electric. What they're doing is, through legislation, they're allowed to have a contract. Okay, what they're paying for, this is how they get around it, because they can't charge it for gas and electric, they can just make it look like that. What they're doing is, um, Eon pay a million pounds, whatever, as a round, round figure, to transfer National Grid, not for the energy, but for the privilege through legislation of having a contract. That contract, that's a contractual allowance for them to place their equipment inside our property. So what we're actually getting charged for, like I said, is it passing through their meters. Okay, every single 
perceived supplier, no matter what they call themselves, are not supplying you with anything. All they're doing is providing their equipment. And I proved this myself in court. Um, I actually got them to take my meter out and take it away. Uh, and I made a judge, I've never seen a magistrate, sorry, not a judge, three magistrates, I've never ever seen, I walked in and did the trust thing, and I instructed the manager, that's manager, I instructed the magistrates, the one in the middle is always the lead one, I instructed to the lady, I instructed the lead magistrate, uh, they were trying to get a warrant of entry to come into my house, uh, to let me have a prepaid meter. Basically I walked into court, did the trust thing, and I said to the magistrates, if, uh, I, did, I, I, I tried to dismiss all charges that I'm the beneficiary of the trust, all that bollocks. And I said to the magistrates, anybody who signs an order now, are you three magistrates, to get a warrant of entry to come into my house, I'm telling you, I'm instructing you now, you must do it with a life signature in front of people. If you, if you turn up, anybody, anybody turns up, locksmiths, whatever, they this without a signed order, I'll defend my property. And I've never seen this before, the lead magistrate woman stood up and signed an order right there for the room. We went out to about 25 people with me. I've never seen it before. I got home and within 40 minutes there were three cop cars, seven, seven gas vans and about 25 blokes all came to take my meter out. And what I realised is, whoever puts pen to paper is instantly liable. This magistrate weren't scared. Why weren't she scared to put pen to paper? The reason being is, is when you're getting cut off for gas and electric, you're not really getting cut off for gas and electric. All that's happening is the company want their equipment back. It belongs to them. If I don't give it them back, it's theft. That's why she signed. The side effect of them taking their meter back for safety is to switch the gas off. So whenever you think you're getting cut off for gas and electric, you're not getting cut off for gas and electric. They're reclaiming their equipment and turning it off for safety reasons. So that's why she stood up. So I let them in. Uh, they got the warrant of entry. It was signed. Um, I was lucky because they couldn't fit me a prepaid meter because I've got a raised floor, so they couldn't do it anyway. So, come on, so they shot me and take it away. So, what I thought then, it got me thinking, hang on a minute, all it's ever about is them reclaiming their equipment, that's why she signed for the magistrate. So, I looked and I thought, well, they're not supplying anything. So, what I did is, um, somebody's asked me about this today. So, what I did is, I found out, I found out who the energy minister is for this country. I, 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 by the way, I don't have templates, I don't type, I handwrite everything, like I used to do hundreds of years ago. I've had fantastic results, and my brother will verify it, from handwrite, handwrite, everything. Something about pen on paper, actual ink, corporation, ink, incorporated, ink on paper, some connection. But every time I handwrite it, I get great results. They recognise it's not a template, it's a living human man putting this, this down. So what I did is, I contacted the energy minister, sent him a notice, Given 14 days, I realised, oh, hang on a minute, why am I trying to pay a company for providing equipment when they're not supplying me with anything? I thought, Transco are supplying me, and these buggers are hijacking me with everything. I don't want their equipment, take it away. I thought, I'll put my own bloody equipment in. So what I did is, I contacted the Energy Minister, I gave him two weeks, I told him what my plans were, I'm going to buy my own gas meter and my own electric meter, I've got three mates doing this, and they've not had any comebacks. I've said, um, it's going to be marked off by a safety engineer and the gas one and the electric one. They're going to be marked off safely. Um, I'm going to zero the meter. Uh, this is me telling the energy minister. And I said, well, what I'm going to do is, um, oh, so that's what I told him. And I said, if I'm wrong, if it's wrong, please get back to me within 14 days and tell me that I'm wrong, tell me that I can't do it. I said, I know you're very busy. I'll, we'll take it that if I don't hear back from you in 14 days, that you're in agreement with me and I can go ahead and do what I want. I'm being honourable, I'm zeroing the meter, it's all nice and safe, and I'm going to send off the meter readings to the ones that are supplying me with gas. Because I recognise the fact that these bandits are just sticking their equipment in my property. Well, they can't force me to do that, I don't consent to it. Two weeks went by, three weeks went by actually, didn't hear a thing, got my meter in, um, and I've got three lads doing this. And what they've done is, uh, they zero the meter, and every three months, they send off their meter readings to Transco, saying, this is what we've used, or this is what, this is what we've used for the last three months, can you please bill me accordingly? Um, I think the longest one's been doing it, he's been coming for two years now. The other one's about a year, I'm not sure about the other one. But none of them have had a bill. None of them have even had an acknowledgement. 
um, from these, sorry, from Transco National Grid. Uh, and the reason being is, Transco National Grid can't sell you the energy, it's free. What they can do is sell a company a contract to place their equipment in. So anyway, that's, that's as far as gas and electric goes. Um, do anybody want to ask anything on that before I move on? Is everybody pretty clear? I wouldn't recommend anybody does this, by the way, because, you know, um, Oh, that information I'm telling you about, I had a mate who used to work for gas people. Uh, he got sacked for selling frozen chickens out of his van, actually. He was selling frozen chickens and he got sacked. So he got pissed off at gas people. Uh, and I was the first person to come with this. And he said, Rob, if you ever get cut off for gas, excuse me, <coughs> if you ever get cut off for gas or electric, he said, um, so let's say I run a bill up for three and a half thousand quid. If I try and, if I don't pay that three and a half thousand quid and I try and go to another supplier, they won't take your own will until you've sorted your, your debt out. And he says, oh no, he says, Rob, it's bollocks. He says, what happens is, he says, after three months, he says, you're classed as uh, shipperless, shipperless. Uh, and what that means is, um, it means you've not had, nobody's shipping stuff to you, supplying you with stuff. So after three months of being cut off, this is, you can then start a fresh contract with a new gas company. So when I went to cut all of that stuff and I made him take the meter away, I wasn't bothered because I timed it so it was about July, June, July, and I thought, well, at worst, I can uh, go three months without gas, get rid of three and a half thousand quid, set a new one up, do it with them, run up as big a bill as possible, get cut off again, time it for the summer, and just keep doing that. I thought, I'm all right. And so I looked in Black's Law Dictionary, I think, I can't remember the edition, 8th, 9th edition. I couldn't find shipperless, but I found shipper. And shipper was, um, I can't remember the exact definition now, but it's somebody who supplies something on behalf of somebody else. And that's exactly proving my point about these companies sticking their equipment in. So, um, obviously it's going to be difficult if you get caught for electric, because you can't have three months without electric. But at least it's, it's something there for us. I mean, you could do it every summer for gas, couldn't you? You could insist that they take it away. I've got mates now who are actually not, not, they've not got bills, they've not run any bills, but they're telling the um, so-called energy suppliers about what they're supplying to come and take their equipment out, get it out, and they're putting their own in now. And so far, as far as I know, um, I don't know anybody who's had any real comebacks from it, because as long as you keep your copy, your original copy that you sent to Energy Minister, you've got his agreement. Uh, I can't see where you're doing anything any, any wrong, I don't know if anybody else can, but you've been quite honourable, you've been as honourable, honourable as possible because you're, you are giving them a meter reading. Now what I found out is that another reason National Grid won't charge you, uh, and the same with these people who put equipment in, they've got no idea how much you're using, that's why you get estimated bills. They can't tell, the ones that put the equipment in, they can't tell whether number 24 is using any more electricity than number 26, or number 39 up the road, they haven't got a clue. It's just a blanket, um, they just blanket it all into that street, they've got absolutely no idea, and that's another reason they can't charge, and that's why they're charging for equipment, for the use of their equipment. So yeah, I thought I'd clear that one about gas and electric. Uh, Thank you. Well, what about water? Who said that? I did. What about water? Uh, water's a great one, actually. Um, I've heard people say that they can be cut off for water, they can't, they can never be cut off for water. Um, again, and it goes back to like what we were saying about natural law and, uh, uh, and religion and Bible or whatever. Who owns water? Who owns gas? Who owns electric? Nobody owns it. All they do is, once again, they charge you for the privilege of passing through their equipment, whether you've got a water meter or not. If you want to stop paying anything, any bill, the easiest two, I would say, is TV licence. Absolute water bollocks. Easiest thing to get rid of. And the other's water. They can... Um, I stop paying water. Well, I'll correct that, I've never paid water doing that, I've never paid council tax, even when I didn't know what I was doing. But I've never paid, a, I didn't have a clue, I still didn't pay. Who used to come to house and somebody knocked on the door years ago, uh, uh, Rob Freeman? I went, Derek Smith? He went, no, are you Rob Freeman? And I, I went, no, are you Derek Smith? He went, oh, and walked off, I didn't even know what I was doing. I thought I'd just talk, he's talking bollocks, I'll talk bollocks. Uh, sorry about that, so getting back to water, yeah, you can never be cut off for water. What they, what they did with me is they sent me, I bought this house about six and a half years ago uh, and they sent a bill in my name, well not my name, that legal fiction name that's similar to mine. They sent a bill in that. Um, in fact, you don't even have to work for it, I just sent it back. I didn't even write it on it, I just sent it back. Then they sent it me again 
I sent it back. I didn't follow up doing so. I don't just, I wasn't just doing that 10 week learning, so I just chucked it, I just sent it back. I don't want it, I just sent it back. Returned to send that, I didn't even know what I was doing. And then they sent me a threatening letter, again in that legal fiction name, and I sent that back. And then I didn't hear it for ages, and then I got the next letter, and, uh, and it said, um, the occupier. What? That's the name similar to mine, it seems to have lost it. So, because it's the occupier, they can never take the occupier to court, so I just threw that away. And then I got another supposed bill six months later saying, um, the present occupier, just chuck that away, and obviously lost my name. And that last one I got, which was years ago, was the present legal occupier. TV license people did the same. So what they did is, because they couldn't get anything out of me, they decided to take my name off it. Well, you can't send a bill to the occupier, you have to have a name. So they can never ever cut you off the water, no matter what anybody says, it's in human rights issues, they can never cut you off. So the easiest two things not to pay are TV license, which incidentally they're going to decriminalise it now. Through, le through legislation, it would never a criminal offence anyway, wouldn't it? That could be a crime if nobody got hurt. So, um, TV licence and water rates, if you've never done any of this stuff, they're the easiest two things to do. Um, so, with the water then, basically you just stop paying and that's it. Is that correct? You can do those letter things with the contracts, uh, like I said, ask for original contracts. Um, and, and ask for a proper bill. Ask for a copy of the original contract that you've both signed. Um, and ask for a life sign bill, not a statement, not, say, not a copy of the account in the third because it's not a loan. Two questions, copy of the original contract showing that you and them have signed, and then can you please send me a life sign bill with a signature? I'll leave it at that. The, the only way they can, they, they, they've upped the ante a little bit, the only way they can, and get this right, the only way they can cut it off the water is if they think the house is empty. So that's why they stopped to put the occupier. But they've got to send somebody out to knock on the door to find out if somebody lives there. Now, whoever knocks on your door, whoever, in fact, any, whether it's a cop or arresting yours, you're never under any obligation to ever give them any information, to tell them your name or anything. You don't have to tell anybody anything. So if, what they might do is knock on your door, say, does anybody live here? Just say, yeah, there's a family here, or whatever you want to say. If they start asking your name, say, am I obliged to even speak to you? Somebody lives here. That's it. That's all you've got to say. They can never ever cut you off. But what yeah? if you don't answer the door? I don't answer. In that case, they won't cut you off until they find out whether someone's living there. They can't cut you off, assuming that nobody lives there because nobody's answered the door or nobody's nobody's writing back to the occupier. Even if it is, it's just a stop tap, isn't it? Just Even if they did cut you off, it's just a stop tap and the thing you just go. Whoa. It is. You can put it back on, can't you? Yeah, I know of one, one family where they came and they, cut, and they turned it off for a minute and then turned it back on again. <clears throat> and this, this chap who wrote to me, he said, what did you say that for? What did you do that for to him? And they said, uh, just to skate, to show you what we can do if you don't pay. So they only turned it off for a minute. And they pretended to do some work and stuck it back on again. So they can never ever cut you off while anyone's living there. You can't be denied water, basically. Okay? Thank you. Just going to move on to something else. Oh, oh right, okay. Um, let me just get this envelope. Do you want another? What, another green one? What do you want? <laughs> they gave some vegetable juice there. That's all right. I'll take that stage. Okay, uh, just a quick thing about bills and stuff since we're on that subject. Um, a lot of people are using this one. First thing I used was um, no contract return to sender. Uh, good tool to use. Um, all you do is open your letter, have a look what it says. So I used to sell take it back up, put a sticker on it, no contract, return to sender, send it back. It's got a return address, uh, and they have to pay for postage. So I did no contract return to sender for I think for about. About the first two years I did this, so this is going back over about six years ago. First two years, anything I didn't want to pay, no contract, return to send it, stick it back up, send it off, put it in the post box, they pay for it. You start getting wise to it. I've got a mate, I've got a lot of mates, I've, got, I've been really lucky with contacts. I've got a mate who works in the post office, um, actually he got sack as well. We're reselling chickens as well. Post now, office got sack. We're doing something anyway. And he used to work for the post office. Um, and he said to me after he left, he said, Rob, he says, don't put no contract return to sender. He says he's not always forced to get back to whoever's sending you that bill. 
He said to me, put um, addressee not recognised, return to sender. Because as soon as you do that, it goes back to the sorting office and it automatically goes back to whoever sent it you. So I thought, well, Mr. Rob Freeman or Rob Freeman in capitals is not me. So I'm not lying, addressee's not recognised, that's not me. Um, I found out things went away a lot quicker by using addressee not recognised. Try spelling addressee, double D, double S, double E, there's more doubles in than out. I thought, I, I could spell it wrong at first. Uh, so I realised addressee not recognised, return to sender, and you're not lying. Um, so that's a good tool to use. But then I started getting really clever. Um, and I thought, well, are they going to make us all, all your letters look similar? So if I recognised it, it was from, I don't know, let's just say, for instance, water people. If I saw it where it said water and stuff, I thought, well, it's not quite an it, is there? Because they know, but if, it, if I'm saying addressee's not recognised, why am I opening it better? Tell it up and sending it back, addressee's not recognised. If there's a label on it, a window, if it's addressee's not recognised, I shouldn't really be opening it, should I? So what I thought is, hang on a minute, I've always fancied me up chances of cooking. I'm a crab cook, by the way, so I'm Italian, I can't for being cook. And what I realised is, I thought, hang on a minute. So what I did then is, every letter I got, okay, I got, this is um, Rob's cookery, five minute cookery lesson, is get a pair of tongs, not curling tongs, um, cooking tongs, put a pan of water on, pan of water on your boil it, get your tongs, Whatever letter you want to have a look in it, but you don't want the other side to know you've looked at it. Keep it, steam's about, pan's about there, steam it. Flipping boring, I sat there, I grew up here once waiting. It takes about five, six, seven minutes. Steam it, count, you know, count dots in wallpaper. paper. Seven minutes later, I mean, this is a shit envelope, by the way. Seven minutes later, um, where, I don't know if you can see it, where it's stuck out, what's, is my nose big? Bank looks great on there. I can tell you, what question. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, it's a Roman, go on, Roman milk. Um, the edge there, once it's been steamed, you get a knife, and what you do is, because of the steam, the glue that they use to stick it, you gently take a knife all the way along, and it's just like butter, it lifts up lovely. And what you do is then, have a look inside, see where it's from, stick it back in, and for 50p, you get a little kit, it's called a print stick. All you do is put a line of print stick along like that, Use a tea towel, stick it back down, there you go, you've got all your information, but you're still not opening it, and you're sending it back addressing not recognised. What's the matter with their heads up the side, they can't understand it, how do you know, how do you know what they're up to when you're not even opening letters, so they still haven't figured it out. So I started doing that, so it's great, it's a way to get yourself um, loads of information without putting on to the side. Why am I doing that? That's not one, is it? Without laying on to the other side, that that's what you've done. So it's a good way of staying, staying ahead of the game. So yeah, so um, if you want to carry on, um, the other reason I stopped using no contract return to sender is it could actually take you into, um, into confrontation or dispute a little bit because the other side, even though we know it's only an agreement and it's unenforceable, they're trained up to believe that they have got a contract. If you send it back no contract, there may be um, there may be an argument brewing there. There may be a dispute which could get you to court. Addressee, addressee not recognised. Return to sender. Absolutely no dispute whatsoever. If anybody knocks on your name, oh, knocks on your name. If anybody knocks on your door and says, "Are you so and so, so and so?" You just say, "Am I obliged to even speak to you? Can you please go away?" You don't even have to talk to them. So addressee not recognised. Return to sender. You're not lying. Uh, there's no dispute, nobody can argue, you're not even saying there's no contract, you're saying you're just not recognised. So I'd use that for that So that's that one. Um, can somebody give me a shout for the last 30 minutes and then we can talk about people's individual stuff? You're probably on it. Are we on it now? Okay. Just give us two seconds. I think we're going to have to have you back as well. Yeah. Pardon? I think we're going to have to have you back. I know, that's, if I'd known sort of how to start tonight, it might have been better, but I didn't know what, what to start with. Yeah, I'd love to come back and do it again. I'll tell you what, we'll leave all that, and I'll, if I think of something, meanwhile, I'll throw it in. Uh, does anybody want to, without, I mean, without going into great detail, because obviously there's a few of us, does anybody want to talk about something specific that we've not spoken about? Uh, that one on the back? Yes. We well, can't see, because it's that bright. Um, I'm in court next week for a speeding, well sorry, I've been invited to court next week for a speeding fine. Okay. Um, they sent me, um, 
they first of all stopped me in the, when I, they stopped me they said oh, we'll, we'll probably send you on a driver awareness course and I just I came home and uh, I forgot about it and then they sent me a letter saying right we, you can't go on that you can have either a fixed penalty notice or you can go to court and I, again I just ignored it. Just interrupt you was it camera? No, no, it was a, a vehicle pulling me over, an unmarked vehicle. Um, okay. And then they sent me a letter saying that I was in court next Wednesday, I think. So, what, what should I do? Should I turn up? Should I just return to sender or what? what? Great question, from the tough one. When I started doing this, I decided that whether he's got a nice flashy uniform on, he's um, in fancy dress with a nice badge, and a truncheon and some handcuffs, or whether he's, whether he's sat in court with a black gown, like that, with a costume, or whether he's just some muppet on the street, I realise that they're all corporations, and so I'm not contracting. The problem you've got there is they've got all the weapons and they've got all the force, and the police, I'm afraid, um, don't recognise anything apart from legislation and legality. <laughs> Excuse me. If you, and I've done this, um, I mean, the brother I've told you, times I've been sat in, in cells, just sat there for three days thinking, why don't I just to pay it? And I can't, and I won't anyway. You've got to be prepared with basically what I'm saying is if you're going to fight it, they are going to, if you're going to go to court and fight it, yeah, take a big tub of Vaseline and a loose belt and just be prepared to get shafted because they're just going to walk straight all over you, railroad you, and you're still going to, you know, getting shafted. If you're going to fight it, uh, two seconds, mate. If you're going to fight it, then you've got to be prepared to go all the way. Uh, and I'd recommend, unless you're prepared to get locked up, I'm going to tell you about a court case where I'm looking at six months prison sentence and I represented myself against a Crown Prosecution Barrister. Uh, they found me guilty, but I ended up getting no action taken whatsoever, no fines, no nothing. That would drive me whilst disqualified. I'll, I'll maybe tell you about that next time. But I was prepared there to get, and I've got my kids, I've been also after my kids. Luckily, I've got a great family that would have helped me out. Uh, my bro was there, wasn't I was prepared to do six months, mate, went to, And that's how far you've got to take it. And that would drive a master disqualified, which incidentally I proved you can't never be disqualified. So, how much is the fine? I've no idea, well, no idea, because he, he, I, I've not took a fixed penalty notice, so it'll be down to the magistrates, I would imagine. See, there's loads of ways of fighting that. Do you know when you get your ticket, you've got three days. That's that number again. You've got three days. You sat in the back of, uh, sat in the back of a cop car. Um, I, I will come to you, John, in a second. Sat in the back of a cop car, he writes your ticket out, doesn't he? What does he do? He keeps the original and he yeah. gives you a copy. Yeah. Why does he give you the copy? Because he's got, you sign it, the he's original contract. contract. Okay. But I didn't sign the contract. I didn't sign, they didn't give me a ticket or anything. Okay, they don't now. They've just they changed it. Report, mate. Pardon? They, they said they were going to report me, and hopefully I'd be, according to them, hopefully I'd be able to go on one of these driver awareness courses. Okay. Did I mean, you? It was half past two in the morning on M1, so. Did you get a fixed penalty notice from the post? No, they, they gave me the option of a fixed penalty notice. Either taking a fixed penalty notice or. Or going to argue a case in court? Yeah. Okay, so so far you've had nothing through other than an invitation summons to court? No, I mean, I, I, I work. Uh, I was, if I was going to fight it using the system's way, what I was going to do is I was going to uh, ask for full disclosure, which obviously you, you, you've got, they've got to do anyway, and then see what sort of evidence they had. And then if they had evidence, then if, you know, if, if I was to, to take it that way, I was going to see, sort of call the bluff. So I don't think they'll, it's March it was, the actual incident itself. It was March? March. When did you last hear from them? Last day from about two weeks ago. Okay, when I did the driving license qualified thing, um, they I kept I, I kept a, I adjourned the court case. I still in it, trust thing, uh, and I got it I got it stretched out so far that they brought it forward two weeks short of six months. If you're not convicted of the statutory offence. In the first six months, that's the statute of limitations up, they can't convict you after that. Right, okay. So I can, I can use that, can I? It's called summary only, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Okay. You have summary only, yeah. which is six months, yeah. you have either way. Okay. So I'll be heard in magistrate or crown and indictment. Summary only or either way. Okay. 
But I, but I, said, I, I think that they that they think that, it, that it's tribal either way because they did say it did state in the letter that I would I had the right for a trial by jury. You said you got a trip the right. So again, I said I had the right of trial by jury. Have you got that on paper? I, it's written down. Yeah. I'd go for a trial by jury. Okay. And then request subject access data request to um, that's brilliant to access, they've got to send you all the evidence that they've got uh, and we can challenge them on that. In fact, stay in touch with me, give me details. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, I'll, I'll, are you on Skype or anything like that? Yes, I am, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll pass it on and I'll, I'll show you what other people have done. But if they're giving you a choice for trial by jury, take that, I would anyway, I'll talk to you, I would take that and then I would get subject, not subject access request, subject access data request. Use the word data because it's all the information. Subject access request is not all the information. So request, it'll it'll go to a, a different court pending, so it gives you more time, and then we'll work on a subject access data request. And they've got all the documents, everything they've got on you, and then we'll ask them to provide the evidence. If it goes all the way to court and they've not provided evidence, we can wipe this out in court. Remember, we've got a jury now of our peers that yeah. like us. Without, it's got to be proved beyond a reasonable doubt. And they've got to show you that evidence. So, yeah, we'll stay in touch. Okay. Go on, John. I was, just, I was just going to say on that point, wouldn't you say that by, I mean, this is just my view, by going into court in the first place, you're recognising their jurisdiction over you. You're saying, I know I'm going into a Leeds United football game here, I recognise that, and here I am, I'm in the game, but now I'm going to argue with you. And the second point would be, aren't they going to make the order dated before you walk in the room, which they did with me? Uh, and they did with you several times. Summary judgment. Yeah, they, they made the, the order dated before the time yeah. before you even okay. got in the courtroom. And thirdly, if they're saying you've got the right to jury, are they saying a right to the jury of your peers? Or are they just saying a jury? Because it's well, different. I, I don't because, know the words of the basis. Because, because a jury of your peers means people like you. So it would have to be us lot. A jury is understood as a jury of your peers. It, it might be understood as being it, but are they actually saying a jury? Good point. Um, just to um, and it reiterate what I said at first, these, they've got the force, they've got the weapons, and they've got the mentality. The problem is, John, if he doesn't go to court, which I agree, he's not entering their place of business, he's not contracting, he's not submitting to their jurisdiction, you'll get found guilty in your absence, you'll then get fined and points on your licence, and then when you don't pay your fine, they'll come with a warrant and drag you out of your house and drag you into court. This is what I'm saying about... But that's a good thing, because at that point, when you, if you just do the bit Mr T thing, is it simple or criminal, I'll see your complaint and turn around and walk, that's it, done, you're out. Just repeat that, John, because it's hard to hear if something's not real. I'm saying that's a good thing to be actually dragged to court, that's what you want. You want to be dragged to court. I've been dragged to court a few times, because, thank God. No, no, but if, if you're in cuffs, you say, I'm under, under dress, I can't speak to you, the second they take the cuffs off, you're free, you go, that's it, job done. If, if they start talking about stuff, you say, I object, and they say, what's the objection? You say, is it civil or criminal? And they'll have to say, it's civil. You turn around and walk. If they say, it's criminal, you say, I'll see if, do you have a complaint against me? Do you, the judge, have a complaint against me? If they say, no, you turn around and walk. If they say, yes, say, I'll see your complaint. If they don't show you, you walk. So it's a, it's a win-win. You're absolutely correct in what you're saying, spot on, mate. But but that, that's mastery of jurisdiction. That, okay, that's but let me just tell you, John, it do not work. It, it, it does, I've seen it work. Okay. But you have to, you have one mistake and you fuck. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, and you, you are, I'm not correcting you, if you say it works, it works. I've been, I've been to many court cases and I've been railroaded that many times. The problem you've got is, if you turn up as Mr John Smith or John Smith in Capitals, even if you've been arrested, they want you to give your name, okay? You have to turn up and represent, represent, you can't, this is why solicitors represent you, that's why they want you to have a solicitor. If I turn up a court, I'm presenting Rob Freeman. But if, you, if you're if literally dragged in though, yeah. if, if they say, there you go, walk in the door, you walk in. Ah, oh, but just let me finish, just let me finish. I'm presenting, well, if I volunteer to go to their place of business, I'm presenting Rob Freeman. They don't want me presenting Rob Freeman, that's why they want the solicitor to represent me. They want to represent me as, that corporate fiction name, which is a dead entity. It's a dead entity. That's what corpse incorporation means. It's a corpse. You're trying to represent a dead entity. Okay, so going back to that scenario, if he gets arrested and does what you say, 
they will ask him, are you, let's say for instance, Mr. John Smith. If he says yes, he's now representing a dead entity. They will not hear him. Oh, 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 law originally was oral. I know it's full of paperwork, that's not how it's supposed to be, that's why you go to a hearing. It's a spoken word. If you're, if you're mental enough to represent a dead entity, then the court will not hear you. No matter what he says, this is how it's sewn up, and this is the illusion that we've got some freedoms and rights and we haven't. This is out and out oppression. You either go to court and represent a dead entity, in which case you're guilty, summary judgment, I'll tell you what summary judgment really is. Um, summarily, you are guilty. If you don't represent the name, and you say I am John Smith in lowercase or anything else, then you are not a party to that hearing and it won't hear you. Either way, you're going to be found guilty. Um, summary judgment. Most uh, bills and debts are summary judgment. Okay, I'll tell you what it is. I found the documents from hundreds of years ago studying the shit that I do. It's not summary judgment, it's... Um, it's to get this, it's a, it's a godfall, but have a look at it, check it out. It's not summary judgment, this is why you get found guilty before you even step in there. And what they're doing is, it's called um, the summary execution of mercantile debt instruments. Wow, what a godfall. Let's break it down, which I did. This is why I thought to myself, how can they summarily find you guilty? Before you even set foot in place, that's it, you've lost. And what they're doing is, I've not lost, Mr. Rob Freeman, the dead entity corporate, corporate name's lost. Okay, summary execution of uh, mercantile debt instruments. What they're doing is mercantile is merchant commerce business. They are executing a debt instrument summarily um, in the name of a dead entity called Rob Freeman. Summary execution of a mercantile debt instrument. The very fact that Rob Freeman's a corporation is um, he's, he's a debtor. He's a debtor straight away, so they're acting commercially against the title. That's why they'll find you summarily um, guilty before you even set foot in place. It's nothing to do with us, the human man. Only corporations go to court, lower courts. Human beings don't go to courts. Only titles and corporations go to courts. If you turn up as a human being like I did, I've got some ID here. <laughs> Excuse me, I had some ID made up a badge. Um, they asked me my name. And I said, I'm the, uh, you have to say authorised. I'm the authorised representative of Rob Freeman. And they went, oh, this is Usher woman. She went, oh, are you? No, at first she said, are you, are you Mr Freeman? I went, no. She goes, well, what's this got to do with you? I said, I'm his authorised representative. Knowing that you have to, if it's a representative, they think you're representing a dead person. I said, I'm his authorised re representative. She went, you'll have to have something written out to be authorised. I said, I'm just going to try it, hang on a second. I went into Twitter and I wrote myself my own authorisation out. I come back out, I said, good piece that way, sorry. And I said, what do you want, love? She went, the magistrates need some written authorisation. I went, oh, oh, will that do? She went, oh, shit, like. And so I went into court, get this, as, um, what, was, what was my name? I've got some ID, I've got a badge made over and photograph on my name was, when I went in court, over something stupid, um, Adopted Spirit of the Chiriku Apache, that was my name, uh, a free man. Uh, adopted Spirit of the, with this hat on, I was saying of the mountain, and I went as um, Adopted Spirit of the Chiriku Apache, free man. And in the end, um, oh sorry, full title, I am, as a name, I am, in fact I get the idea, I can have a look at it, I am, Adopted spirit of the Chirikura Apache Freeman. In the end, I had the magistrates calling me Mr. I Am. I said, I'm not Mr. I Am, I'm just I Am. And in the end, I got them to call me I Am. So what I'm saying is, um, why did I, you know, why did I even tell you that? Um, yeah, so going back to that, you've either, have you got your hand up? Oh, no, 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 stood up. Blimey, I always wanted to do it on stage with bright lights. Um, You've either got to represent something that's a corporate thing that's got, it's going to be summarily a debt instrument against it, which they're cashing in on, or you've got to turn up as a human being which they won't recognise. Um, so you can't win either way, can you? Um, is that covered that already? So what do you do? That's the point. What do you do? Well, that's just lovely. That's nice. It's flowing now. Okay, what I've realised is, thanks for that question, that's a great, that simple question's great, because this is what I wanted to tell you tonight, the new stuff I'm coming across. 
Okay, what I've realised is that from me many trips to court, many trips helping people, there is no remedy whatsoever in magistrates' courts. There's no remedy in county courts. It's a load of bollocks. Oh, how long have I got left? Keep going. Okay, I'll tell you why this all, and this is what I've come across lately, and I've got the information, if anyone wants it. Okay, you've got low courts, magistrates' courts, county court, uh, I think that's about it, really. Then you've got, which we've all heard, uh, we have all heard of, High Court. Hmm, so let's have a look. Okay. High Court split into three sections Family, Chancery, which you may have heard of, and Queen's Bench. Okay, that's High Court. Low Courts, High Court, Supreme Courts, and above. Okay. Ooh, get, get it now. Okay, what I realise is there is no, um, there's no remedy in the lower courts. So, from doing studying, I've got documents, if anybody wants them, I'll leave the details. What I found out is you've got inferior courts and superior courts, okay? All your lower courts are called inferior courts. Your high court and above are called superior courts. Okay, well, what's the difference? Massive difference. Well, this is where our remedy lies. We can do all this, we can do this now. And I'll, I'm gonna, I've got a case for a very close friend of mine over employment um, and either shortly before Christmas or after we are going to High Court. Once we've found the procedure, it's all procedure. If you mess up on procedure, it all goes to shit. So I'm making sure, I'm taking me time to get the procedure. When we've done this, me and this close friend, I'm going to show you how to do it because we'll have it all. And it's simple. So just going back, um, just shout me if it's getting boring. Inferior court, superior court. Okay. The difference being is magistrates court and county court, it's the classed as a court of record uh, or a court not of record. Okay, massive difference. Magistrates court, county court are courts of not courts of not record, that's what they're called. What I once asked to usher in magistrates court, I said, is this a court of record? She went, no. She says, we do keep a record, but it's not a court of record. Okay, a court of record is a private meeting. That's why we're getting shafted in magistrates court and county court. It's a, pri it's a private trustees meeting, member of the trust. It's all sorts. All it is is, it's like everybody in the staff of Tesco having a private meeting, that's all it is. That's why if you ever get a transcript from a magistrate's court, they can change it round, they're doing nothing wrong. It's a court of not record. Okay. A court of not record, get this, they don't have the power to fine, imprison, uh, or um, lock you up for contempt. And I'll repeat that. A court of not record, not record, which is magistrate. I mean, people have been locked up for magistrates, lots, haven't they? A court of not record don't have the power to lock you up, fine you, or lock you up for contempt. Okay. Why do people get locked up for magistrates' courts? Because they consent, and that's why. Okay, a court of record is high court, for instance. Forget family court, because that's to do with children. Um, two other sections of High Court is Chancery and Queen's Bench. The, Queen, uh, the High Court is the Court of Equity. Okay, it's not. The lower ones of legislation, which is consent, the courts of not record. I'll see if I can explain, it's quite complicated, but it's easy when you know, it's hard to explain. The High Courts, forget the chap, um, family one, Chancery and Queen's Bench are courts of equity. They're called, they used to be called the King's Conscience, it's Queen's Conscience. This is a judge sits here in a court of record. He allows to be done what should be done as if it was being done to himself. This is where our remedy lies. This is what nobody does. A judge, I've got some maxims on equity. I read out on my radio, I do a radio show for Critical Mass Radio. I read them out of the week. Some great things, equity is the way to go. Equity is something, it's, it's the conscience, it's to do what's right and it's to do with what's called clean hands. Okay, what we need to do is get all these cases into high court. Because you judge the inequity. A court of record, um, just trying to, trying to circumvent it shortly because it's a really compl complicated subject. It's what's called, it's good faith. And what it is, is... Um, it's called, it's the doctrine of clean hands. And what it's saying is, you sign an affidavit, a sworn statement of truth, and you put that into the court. You sign it yourself on penalty of perjury, and what you're doing is, what we're, <coughs> me and me close friend are doing is, 
against his company that he used to work for is we're putting an affidavit in, whoever puts the affidavit in first, a sworn statement of truth, let's say, um, well, my mate, we've got 50 points against this company that, that have, they've alleged wrongdoing by my friend to his company. We stick an affidavit, it costs their money, we stick an affidavit into High Court. Now, okay. Right, um, I'm Rob Freeman. No, I don't like that. Where were I? Quite a record. Quite a record. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, court record stands for all time. Any time right now. Whoever gets to in first becomes the um, <coughs> applicant. Let me have a drink, sorry. <coughs> Coffee minute, I'm sorry. It's the plaintiff or the applicant. They submit an affidavit first. Okay, let's say there's 50 points like ours is going to be. Whoever, now we are, instead of coming into court as a defendant, what the hell are we defending for? Let's bring it to them now. So we become the plaintiff, we're the applicant, we've got the upper hand. In equity courts, whoever brings the, whoever brings the claim, let's talk to this habit, whoever brings the claim first, comes in with clean hands, signed on the affidavit under penalty of perjury, a sworn statement of truth. Now, 50 points on affidavit, 100 points, whatever you want to do. The other side now have got to rebut all 50 points that you put on your affidavit with evidence. You're the one instigating, you're the one making the claim. The onus now is on the other side to rebut every single point, point for point on that affidavit with evidence. Now, this doesn't work if you're trying to get out of stuff, you're trying not to pay stuff, um, well, that's a bad example. You're trying to get away with stuff. If you've done something wrong and you fill in affidavit, and this is for the camera and the people at home are still filming, if you cannot use an affidavit, a sworn statement of truth, without acting in honour. If you're dishonourable and you're lying, it will be exposed in a high court. You have to, on the penalty of perjury, you have to tell the truth. You have to know it's the truth. You have to be honourable. And when you stand in truth in a court that's higher, a court of record, a superior court, the onus is on the other side to come back at you and disprove it. Now, if you've got 50 points of exact truth from your heart that you've signed up, how can anybody rebut that point for point with evidence? It's impossible. And the reason it works, and, and we're going to do this, and I'll be able to show everyone, it's not hard, it's just hard you know, procedure. And so I've learned that, I'll do it for people. If you're telling the truth, how can anybody rebut that with evidence to calm? And so what happens is you'll get the judgment every time. Now just to complicate this a little bit more, is you've got statute law which is um, which is not really law, is it? It's corporate and it's by consent. You've got a proper crime. I wanted to go into what crime was. Okay, you try to get me driving whilst it's qualified and the criminal court in magistrates. Well, in order to be a crime. In order to be a crime, you've got to have a, uh, an injured party. Somebody has to be injured. Co I think it's called corpus delecti. You've got to have somebody who's injured, who's making a claim against you, that's been harmed. Um, in order to be a crime, you've got the act of whatever you did. You've also got something called mens rea, or mens rea which is a guilty mind. If you, don't, if you commit an, an alleged crime but you don't know it's a crime, then you cannot possibly be found guilty because you didn't have the intention, the guilty mind. So that's the difference between a crime, uh, the act of what you're doing, a guilty mind, mens rea, and an injured party, corpus delecta. You've got to, somebody's got to come forward and say they've been armed, otherwise there's no crime. Three good things. Statue is not a crime, is it? It's, um, you've broken a rule of society that's got no force. But, and this is the crux of what I'm actually getting at, and this is, this is our remedy, this is where we're going to beat the, I'm going to swear now to get in the shark on the side, that have been oppressing us for thousands of years, this is how we're going to do it. In between crime and legislation, is something called tort, T-O-R-T, -O -R -T, tort, okay, and this is where we're coming from. Okay. <coughs> Sorry about this, it's dragging on. If I, if somebody commits a crime against me, I've got a cop shop, don't I? Sign a witness statement, yeah? They get interviewed, blah, 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 whatever. Goes to court, if they get found guilty, I don't get anything. As long as it's a crime, CPS, police will take it away from you. If I decide to drop charges two weeks later, CPS and police, no, no, I've got to know. What? When it's a crime, 
an injured party, the powers that be, the cops, the CPS, they have an obligation to follow that through for the safety of the public in general. Okay, so to take it away from me, the punishment will be prison if it's something serious and a fine, yeah? What do I get out of it? Nothing. They get locked up, the money goes to all, because to them, not me. As a victim, I then have to claim some sort of victim, uh, what's it called? Um, we get paid for being a victim. Yeah, compensation. Yeah, but it's, only, it's not a large amount, and I have to go and apply for that, don't I? Yeah. Okay. Tort, T O R T, is something, statute, statute crime, tort is somewhere near crime. Tort is any wrongdoing, okay. For a crime to be proven, uh, to find that person guilty, the onus is on, if we were, remember that's how we did the affidavit, we've got to prove 100% beyond a reasonable doubt that somebody committed that crime, okay. In tort, the onus is not, we don't have to prove 100% that that person or whatever committed that crime and had the intention, the mens rea, to do that. All we have to, now this is the beauty about it, all we have to prove is that this person's actions or, oh, actions or inactions have harmed us in some way. Now that might sound the same as before, it's not, it's massively different. Okay, basically taught is through action or inaction, it's mainly negligence. Okay, so as an example, imagine these 10 people in my garden. Imagine I start showing off, we've all had a few babies, and I start swinging a shovel around, and I just happen to walk one on the back of his head. Have I committed a crime? This is a definition of the difference between tort and crime. Have I committed a crime? I haven't really ever. I've injured him, yeah, exactly. Fantastic. Exactly. He can't go to the police and say, Rob Freeman walked up and purposely smashed me in the back of the head with that, can he? He can't, because that's not right. The men's ray, I didn't mean to do that, did I? So I've not committed a crime, have I? But should I be held accountable? I think I should. Okay, what I'm accountable for is, and this is the King's Conscience, Queen's Conscience, it's Queen's Bench now, this is called King's Bench, it's now called Queen's Bench, this is the Conscience of Equity Court. I ought to have known that having 10 people in my garden swinging a shovel around, um, through my negligence, I've harmed, I've caused harm to someone, haven't I? All they've got to prove is that my actions or inactions have harmed them in some way. Now, they haven't got to prove 100% on a reasonable doubt. They've just got to prove that they've suffered from somebody's actions. That's, can you understand what talk is now? Okay. The main punishment for a crime is prison. The main punishment, the only punishment, to get this, for tort is compensation. Now, that's what we all want, don't we? So, the hardest thing to, and some people talked about it earlier, the hardest thing to prove now is fraud. Fraud is 99.9% .9 impossible to prove. The coppers, you can't go to coppers now about fraud, you can't go to cops, they've got the fraud action website, whatever it's called. They've passed it off. Don't, I wanted to, I wanted to take the bankers, the mortgage bandits, all these people that have oppressed us, somebody shout up when we need to finish. I wanted to take them to court for fraud. You've got to prove it 100%, now we don't have to. We don't, fraud is impossible to prove. But when we can, what we can, we don't even have to prove it. What we can do is um, show that through their negligence, through something they've done negligently or something they haven't, that's the duty about tort, it can be inactions, they've got a, a duty of care and responsibility to do something, they may not do that. What we've got to show, we're not going to prove it, is that we were harmed in some way. And instead of them getting locked to poor, they might not get 20 years in prison, but what they will do is have to pay a massive amount of money now. Okay, so that's where we're headed. That's our remedy, and that's what. If I see you before, I hope I, see you, I hope I do see you before Christmas, but I'll certainly see you after Christmas when this is wrapped up. The hardest part about all this is following the procedure. That's the bit I've had to learn. I've not been as active doing stuff lately because I've had my head in books studying. Um, once I've learned the procedure, it's going to be out, and it's not hard to do. Now, just as an addition to that. Another fantastic tool, and is, is anybody familiar with Simon Spaniel? Yeah, he did some fantastic work. Five years ago, I found out about something called a commercial lien, a lien, a claim or something. 
I found it from a Christian website, an American Christian website five years ago. I think I was probably one of the first people to ever do a commercial video. Guy, Guy, Guy Taylor. Taylor. Yeah, uh, Guy Taylor's club. I, I stayed at Guy Taylor's house on uh, November 2011 for a day. Spent a full day with his lovely wife to try and learn what to do. I'd already done it before that. Um, and Guy Taylor's got some commercial ears, fantastic. If you're watching this guy, spot on a good man, I like him. Um, um, and what I realised is I set this commercial in, it's a slow process, it takes, takes 90 days to set up. I did it, I was probably one of the first to do it five years ago, but I couldn't figure out how to enforce it. And so I let it go, it was really complicated back then. Uh, Guy Taylor's got a few, he's, he's doing really well on some of this. Uh, and Sy Spanion and some other people have now shown us, showed us how to do it, how to do it, you still follow procedure, but now how to enforce it. And what happens is, first we take it to high court, like I said, through tort, we get, we find them guilty, or they will get found guilty through negligence, just proving that some harm has occurred. They get, we get a payment of compensation, and what we do is, from that same original affidavit that we send out to, to the court, our statement of truth, we now, from that court's happened, we now send this individually, this affidavit, to the individual concerned. So in my friend's case, it's the CEO of his company. And we send it to him, it's the same affidavit, he's got 50, 60 points, he's got 10 days to rebut every single point on that affidavit with evidence. If you're telling the truth, he cannot do it. If he ignores it, whatever he does, if he doesn't rebut it, in 10 days, we send it back to you, and we put in every single point of evidence, time's up, it takes 90 days to create the process, it's done, 10 days it's over. You then follow the process, um, after 90 days, on the 90th, you follow the process, you go through it, and a little bit of work to do, it's paperwork, backwards and forwards, but you've already done it, it's the hook. First 10 days, it's over. If you don't rebut it in that first 10 days, it's good night together. Okay, good night together, that's all. Rinse this cat out, don't uh, <laughs> Those were older. Yeah. Uh, okay, so on the 91th day, I'll say that again. On the 91th day. <laughs> no, I mean, not in the 91st. In between 90 and 92nd day, um, the, you create what's called a commercial lien, and it becomes a negotiable instrument. I'll show you the steps to do when I've done my own, and this chat. It becomes a document, okay. I found out from Simon Spaniard, you can, you can create a commercial lien worth unbelievable amounts. You can call it 90 trillion, zillion, billion, gone zillion pounds. You can do it for 1p. Simon Spaniard's found out that if you do it between 40 and 50 million, remember, 10 days ago, he's not going to it, it's all over. It's a thought process. Okay, you do it between 40 and 50 million pounds. Sounds like a lot of money, doesn't it? Okay, you create it. You, you follow all the steps properly, you've now got a negotiable, valid, commercial instrument document worth £50 million. Pounds. Okay. This is a bit I got to, but didn't know how to enforce it. But Simon Spanion and another chap said some great information. He's once created on the 91th day, you can, there are financial institutions, and I've got a list of them, that will buy this off you. So what you do is, you sell, I would get this, you sell it for between one and two percent. That's why it's best. Some people have got, I mean, Guy Taylor's got a commercial lien for about, I think it's about 190 million. But what we found out is if you keep it between 40 and 50 million for each one, okay, you can sell it for between one and two percent to some financial institutions. Okay, one percent of 50 million is half a million. They pay you the half a million and they enforce the lien, they, they can sell it on themselves then. With this lien, you can claim the, whoever's not rebutted your affidavit, every single bit of his property, his house, his cars. If he's sold them to somebody else, it don't count, but he's still going to took off them. No matter what he tries to hide, no matter what he tries to do, uh, a commercial lien stands for 99 years. It can only be removed by being paid off, or whoever created it, by removing themselves. Also, we found out if you put a commercial lien into a trust, it doesn't stand for 99 years, it stands for all time. Okay, so this bloke who's dead and gone, his family have got to carry on paying it, and their family until it's paid off. Yeah. So, sorry, can I just, is this what you've heard of the Montana Free? You've heard of those? 
they have, yeah. And I think they, I don't know if it's in the 1990s, but they were doing all that sort of thing, and put commercial rulings on judges and government officials, and then trading the, the liens. But in their case, they were buying guns and ammunition yes. to arm themselves, so that's... Yeah. It's recognised it's recognised as a valuable commercial instrument, but you've got to follow the process exactly. And that's the bit. It's all about procedures and processes. Um, so, how uh, long have we got? Five minutes left? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to finish off now, and I want to talk a bit more about mortgage, so I'll do that next time. And what I've been doing is I've, been, I've got about 40... <laughs> I've got about 44 different bits to a mortgage. Like I said, right from when you first go in and sign, right to the uh, repossession process, get out. I've got loads of, uh, like I was saying, there's a, there's a parcel of land called an easement. How many people know about easement? I think I was the first one to bring this up. You, um, I'll make it quick. Give, give me six minutes and I'll explain um, the whole thing. I'll finish in six minutes. What I found out is, uh, let's take an address. Um, um, 22 Acorn Street, okay, get your mortgage. There's a charge placed on 22, 22 Acorn Street, yeah? If you default on your mortgage like I've done. The military, in case of national emergency or um, being attacked, the postcode identifies your street, does it not? You share the same postcode. 22 Acorn Street is the name of the street, okay? Uh, my field property, which you can't put a charge on, okay? If you can't put a charge on it, and they've got a charge on 22 Acorn Street, I thought to myself, well, I can't live on 22 Acorn Street, can I? I thought, no, because you can't put a charge on your property. So I thought, well, hang on a minute. With what does 22 Acorn Street, I'll do about that, pertain to? And what I realised is, okay, this piece of paper is the street, yeah? Imagine that's the centre line of the street, traffic going one way, traffic going another. Yeah? Everybody with myself up, yeah? I'll, I'll, I'll put it up last so you can see it. That red thing's my house. Okay, what I realised is, imagine that's the centre of the road. What I found out is from the from my freehold, which was right there, from my freehold to the centre of the road, okay, that is 22 Acorn Street. That's what they've got the charge on. <coughs> they can only repossess the bit in front of your house. You can't put a charge on your property. So what they've duped us and tricked us into um, is that we, okay, and by the way, all your gas, all the electric come across, it's called an easement, easement parcel of land. That parcel of land, 22 Acorn Street, is owned in trust by the council. You don't own it, it's held, in, it's held, sorry, held in trust by the council. It's what makes it the street. The other side of the road, 99 Acorn Street is the section from the end of their boundary that makes up the road. The only thing they can really repossess is that bit in front of the house, but they can, can move in front to my house, I don't care. They can repossess that bit, but they can't touch anything in the back of it. So that's another thing. I've got another four chart points that I can prove that they cannot repossess your property or put a charge on it. Okay, so uh, two numbers to mention now, I'm going to wrap up in three minutes. So what I decided to do is I'm going to have to fight the street position that you're going to come for. You're going to juggle figures around. I'm going to have to go to the county court again, and I'm going to beat them. I always beat them. I beat everybody because I'm what I'm doing is right. Um, and once I've done this Christmas, they always come to me shortly after Christmas in January. I've been trying to fight, and I've got I've got so many friends who are working 24/7. What we're trying to do is we're trying to fight a, a, a mortgage system that's thousands of years old. We're trying to bring down a system. These are wooden district judges, they want to see the system of power, don't they? That's what pays their wages. So they always side with the corporations. And I've realised now, even though I've got this, I was going to have a documentary made about me, and we were going to try and sell it by some proper filmmakers, and they were going to try and sell it to mainstream media about my fight with the mortgage people, and I've shelved it. And what I've realised is, no matter what, we can't win against a system that's designed to pretend to loan us money, pretend to we are landowners, and then nick it back off us. That's what it's designed to do. We're never going to bring that system down. Too many people are getting too rich off it. So what I, what I realised about a month ago, from helping me make a different case, is I'm not going to try and beat the mortgage system anymore. I know it's all fraudulent. I can accuse them that it's all fraudulent, but in a lower court of no, 
not of record, i.e. county court, magistrate, we to magistrate court, it would be county court, they're going to side with them every time. Remember when I told you about the interest from usury, the judge in the district, district judge in the court, then the county court sided with them every time. I'm not going to try it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my 50 points down that I want in an affidavit form, giving 10 days for the CEO of the bank or mortgage company to rebut what I'm saying. He's got 10 days. Okay. If he doesn't and he can't, how can he possibly have got the documents to prove it? He can't prove up that I borrowed the money. I created the funds. He can't show me the accounting. He can't show me the original contract. I can get him on the easement. I've got loads of stuff. Absolutely loads. You've got 10 days, mate, to rebut it. If not, we don't go to county court. Now I'm taking him to high court, to a court of record. I've now suffered a tort through his actions and his company's actions. Look how different it is now. I haven't got to prove beyond a reasonable doubt is commit fraud, which is a crime. All I've got to do is to show that his inactions or actions, the CEO, or his employees' actions and inactions have caused me a harm or a wrongdoing or some sort of injury. Can you see the difference now? Okay, and whatever, if we're winning court or not, I'm going to finish now, one more minute and I'll call it a day. It must be getting boring, your arse must be ruined. Um, it's not I'll, yeah, that's later, Gary Clark's doors. What is from here, right? Um, where are we? Yeah, um, if we're in court, remember what I said about tort, you haven't got to prove it, just like you were harmed, you get compensation, but what else did I say? The beauty about this is, I owe 160 grand, I think probably more, I don't know, <coughs> 150, six years later I owe 160 now. Um, we're in court, get the compensation, but remember what I said? about the uh, original affidavit, I then, after the High Court, Court of Record, I'm winning that, I get the compensation, I stole my mortgage, I'm not trying to beat the system, I'm not refusing to pay, what do I do? I use the same affidavit against the CEO of the company, this time he's got 10 days again to report it, when he does it, what do I do? I'll wait 91 days, and I take out a commercial lien against the CEO of that mortgage company, yeah, on the 91th day, then I have a negotiable instrument worth half a million, 40 to 50 million, sorry, 40 to 50 million. I sell it at 1%, I've got the list of people to sell it to. I then get half a million pounds for a commercial lien against the CEO of my mortgage people. I sell it at 1%, I've got me half a million, and I use that to pay my mortgage off. Thank you very much. I've got half a million pounds, I own 150 grand, I'll keep the other 350 grand, thank you very much. I'm not fighting the system a system that can never be beaten, designed that way. And look what I'm doing, my, I'm finishing up the last minute. My whole thing, from anybody that knows me for a long time, is my whole thing has never been to fight. Remember I said, condition I accept, I accept, I don't fight you. My whole thing has been to mirror it back. Whatever they're doing to us, mirror it back. Remember when I said, the object is to get them to owe more money to me than what they're claiming I owe them. I'm not getting into this deal, I'm not fighting the mortgage, I'm not trying to bring the system down. I'm putting my claim forward, which is worth a lot more than their claim. You've got 10, 10, 10 days, sorry, to disprove everything I'm saying, otherwise it stands for all time. So I'm going to say for the last bit, fuck off. I've got half a million. I'm using your money to pay your so-called fraud off, and I'm sitting pretty. So thanks a lot for listening, I'll come back again. Cheers.